Good morning, children of God. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that you take absolute control of this word. And Father Almighty, this word may speak to our hearts in a way that only you can, and that it will bear good fruit, that our hearts may be as rich soil. In Jesus' name, it may be rich soil in your, for your word. In Jesus' name. So um, right now we're going to be looking at the story of how um, the devil tempts Jesus. We can find the story in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and I'm going to be reading from verses 1 all the way down to verses 11. And just in case you were curious, I am actually using the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay, so here it goes. Then Jesus was led. This is after, um, in case you're following this, um, this was after Jesus was baptized. Okay, so after Jesus was baptized, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted, that's Jesus. And Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards, he was hungry. Now when the tempter, who is the devil, came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man, shall not leave by bread alone, but by every word that push proceeds from the mouth of God. So I want us to discuss that for a little bit before I go further. So here the devil comes. He doesn't come on the first day after Jesus had fasted. And just in case we're wondering what fasting is, oftentimes fasting means abstaining from something. In this case, from food and from drink. And um, the, as you read, as you heard me read, the Holy Spirit actually brought Jesus to the wilderness. Think about that time period as a boot camp, yeah? Like when someone is in the military before they actually become active duty, before they actually um, fully enrolled, they go through a boot camp process. So think about this as a spiritual boot camp. So the Holy Spirit takes Jesus to this spiritual boot camp, and the physical part of it was that he was in the wilderness. Um, so that he could concentrate, so he could pray. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. And uh, he was also fasting during that time period for a whole 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil didn't come on the first day to tempt him. No, he didn't come on the 20th of the day. No, he came on the 40th day, right as Jesus was about to finish his fasting. So then the devil came. And the devil knew that Jesus was obviously very hungry. And he asked him, listen, I know you're the son of God. You can do this. This is no big deal for you. Turn this stone to bread. And Jesus, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, he knew that the devil was trying to sidetrack him from what he was supposed to do, which was to finish this fasting and prayer. Because that time period was for fasting and prayer, to strengthen his spirit for the task ahead of him. It was a spiritual boot camp, and the devil was trying to sidetrack him using the fact that Jesus was hungry. And so Jesus responded. Remember, the word of God is very important. Jesus responded based on the scripture. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone. It's not only food that is important, but what is more important is the word of God. So that's what Jesus said. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Which basically means, this is what I feel it means. It means that man should not live based on just bread, just food. There's a time for everything. There's a time where you need to abstain and get in touch with God. It doesn't mean you can't get in tune with God when you're eating, but it's just a time for everything. And he was trying to let the devil know that no, this is a time for the word of God. The word of God is more important than bread. So I'm going to continue reading. I'm now on verse 5. Remember, I'm reading this from Matthew chapter 4. And currently I'm on verse 5. 
Then the devil, so after this, for the first temptation, then the devil took him up into the holy city. So I'm guessing all this happened in the spirit, okay? Um, the devil took him up on, on into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. That's the very top part of the temple, pinnacle. You can look it up if I'm wrong. Just check it, what pinnacle means. And the devil said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written. The devil also quoted scripture. Listen. The devil's. Let me read it again. Then the devil took him up into the holy city. And set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And the devil said to Jesus. If you are the son of God. Throw yourself down. For it is written. He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Look at that. I told you the devil twist the truth so yes the devil quoted the word of God but he was using it in a wrong way okay he was telling Jesus to jump from from up the temple down in other words almost trying to ask Jesus to be suicidal to jump from the temple and almost asking Jesus to tempt God that he knows that God is going to send the angels you see we must not do things to tempt God God even though we're children of God and God has the power to do everything. doesn't mean you should stand in front of um, a moving vehicle and say, I want to see if God is going to save me. This is not how God wants us to function. So let's see how Jesus responds to what the devil says. Now I'm on verse 7. Jesus said to the devil, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Did you see that? Jesus knew he was God. And so Jesus said, Do not tempt me. You see what I'm saying? The devil was trying to tempt Jesus to get up on there, jump down, just so he can he can he can brag in a way. Do you know what I mean? So the angels of God comes down and tries to rescue him. That's not how God functions. That is not how God functions. And Jesus responds based on the word of God. That's why you need to know the word of God. You can't just listen to just anybody telling you the word of God. You have to study it for yourself. And the Holy Spirit rests in you. Tell God to, un to interpret the word of God to you. You see, the devil came and quoted the word of God. But he used it inappropriately. But Jesus knew the word of God because he is the word of God. And he came back with the right quotation and told the devil right straight away. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You see, in the physical, we battle with, with, with blows and fists. We battle with arrows. We battle with guns. We battle with bombs. But in the spiritual, we battle with our knowledge of the Word of God. We battle with the Word of God. We battle. The Holy Spirit fights for us. Alright, so I'm going to keep reading. Now we're going to go to verse 8. The devil did not give up. Again, the devil took him up. The devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to Jesus, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Did you see that? The devil took Jesus up on a mountain, showed him everything. And was now telling Jesus to worship him. And that that, that he would give Jesus everything if, if, um, if Jesus did that. And you see, the devil still does those things. He tries to trade what God has destined for us for a short-term pleasure. He tried to tr tell Jesus to bow to him so he can get the whole world. When Jesus has... Much more than that. Jesus owns heaven and earth. Do you, you see what I'm saying? But the devil was trying to just at that moment. Just trying to trick Jesus. So as a child of God. You are beyond this world. You live in this world. Do not. But you are not of this world. If that makes any sense. In other words you are greater because of Jesus in you, because of the Holy Spirit in you. So don't be tempted by money, 
flashy cars or someone telling you you're going to get a high post in rank. It's okay to take those things if it's given to you in a godly way. But don't let someone have you compromise the word of God for those things. Because God has much more in, in store for you than what that other person could ever give you. So devil was trying to give Jesus all these things when Jesus has more than that. So in this world, sometimes as, as Christians, we do that. We let the devil use other people to derail us from the word of God, to compromise the word of God for an immediate gratification, even though God has given us much more. I'm going to continue reading. Then Jesus responded to the devil and said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him. And guess what happened after that? Jesus had defeated because Jesus told him, Oh, wait, sometimes you have to tell your enemy, Away! In other words, you have to tell principalities and powers and all this wickedness, Away with you. I'm going to read again. Jesus responded, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. Worship no other person. And him only shall you serve. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to Jesus. When you overcome your temptation, blessings of God flows through like water. God bless you, and I pray God gives you the strength to overcome temptation. I pray that in your wilderness moment, in your time of temptation, you shall not give in to devil, but rather you shall conquer. But we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. God bless you. And I love you. And if you've ever fallen out of temptation, do not despair. Do never let the devil tell you, oh, you've messed up already. You cannot come back. No, no, no. There's always grace. His grace is sufficient for you. You get up and you move on. God bless you.